All right, we'll get started here. Josh, you gotta watch off. Keep track of time for me. Uh, kind of give me a signal when I get to about two minutes if I ain't shut up by then. And uh, Judd was supposed to preach today. He left. I didn't know. So he was probably ain't gonna get much today. But I'm gonna give you a thought here. Something, uh, something I hope you want. And it's something we all should want. But he said in the book of Micah, chapter number 3, drop down here to verse number 8, the Bible said, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might, to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob, and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment, and pervert all equity, they build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward, and the priests thereof teach for hire, and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps as, and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. And what you have down through that chapter is basically Micah prophesying, and he's prophesying against the political power. He's prophesying against the princes and the heads of the house of Israel, and he's showing them their transgression. And then you drop down there to verse number 5, and he begins to, to preach against the prophets and the priests. And so he's preaching against everybody and everything. He's preaching against the religious hypocrites. He's preaching against those in authority that are doing wrong, that are corrupting their people. And then he drops down there to verse number 8. He says something that every Christian should want. He said, but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Now I hope today as a Christian that you want that. You ought to want that. Every preacher ought to want that for sure. But beyond every preacher... You ought to be want as if, if you're saved today, you ought to want to be filled with power by the Spirit of God. You ought to want to have the power of God on you, is what I'm saying today. You ought to want to have that as a Christian. I know preachers, they pray, God give me your power today. God fill me with your spirit. Hey, it ought not just be today that you want to have the power of God on you. It ought not just be when a preacher stands up to preach or when a person goes to witness that they all want to be filled with the Spirit of God and that they want to have the power of God. Hey, that's something that you and I as saved men today ought to want to have every day of our lives. We ought to want to have the power of God on us. But can I tell you how you're going to get it? He said, "I'm true, uh, truly I am full of power, what? By the Spirit of the Lord. If you're going to have the power of God, you've got to be full of the Spirit of God. You can't have the power of God in your own flesh. You can't have the power of God walking after the old man. That's why Paul spends so much time in the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Colossians, telling you what? Put off this old man and put on, therefore, the new man, which is created in the image of God after righteousness and true holiness. That's why Paul tells you over there in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number 5, I believe it is, round about verse number 18, be not, uh, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. It's a command for you and I as Christians. It's not just the preacher. It's not just the Sunday school teacher. It's the people in the pews too. It's you. If you're saved today and you don't go to church, you're commanded to be filled with the Spirit of God. Are you? Do you want the power of God? Are you willing to be filled with the Spirit? You've got the Spirit of God in you, but that don't mean you're full of Him. That Bible tells you what? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. That Holy Spirit of God that's inside you that set a seal upon your soul, that keeps the sin of this flesh from touching your soul and corrupting it, you know what you can do with that Holy Spirit? You can grieve it. The Bible tells you, quench not the Spirit in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Not only can you grieve the Spirit of God, but you can quench the Spirit of God. And I'm afraid to say it, I'm ashamed to say that most of the time in my own life, and most of the time, if I bet a few men were honest, you'd say, you know what? I grieve God. 
I grieve the God that's inside of me. Or I quench the God that's inside of me, the Spirit of God. But boy, I tell you what, if you're going to have the power of God, you're going to have to get full of the Spirit of God. You know what he said over there in Ephesians 5 when he said, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He doesn't leave you just on that command. He goes on to tell you how. He said, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You know what you're going to do? Are you willing to give up your music? Are you willing to give up your country music? Are you willing to give up your rap music? Are you willing to give up your rock and roll for those good spiritual songs? Boy, I tell you what, they ain't nothing better than those good old hymns, those good old songs, those songs that lift up the Lord Jesus Christ, that brag about Him, that brag about His blood, that brag about His mercy. Boy, that's what it's going to take. You willing to give up some things to be full with, filled with the Spirit of God? You willing to give up the things of this world to be filled with the Spirit? I don't know if you are or not. But I know this, as a saved man today, all of us that are gathered around here, every one of us ought to want to be filled with the Spirit. I know there's not a man sitting here that's saved today that does not want the power of God. Every one of us probably want the power of God on our lives. But are we willing to do what it takes to have it and be filled with the Spirit of God? I hope we are. Brother Josh, pray for us. We'll shut up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, say God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.